For today's British bedtime story, we travel to the Isle of Britain to read a British bedtime story written by a British author and narrated by British celebrities. I'm Stephen Fry, and today's book is The Tale of Squirrel Nutkin. Now, over to my co-host, Alan Rickman. The story is written by Beatrix Potter. My voice is not very relaxing. This is a tale about a tale that belonged to a little red squirrel, and his name was Nutkin. He had a brother called Twinkleberry, and a great many cousins. They lived in a wood at the edge of a lake. Hello, this is Michael Kane. In the middle of the lake, there's an island covered with trees and nut bushes, and amongst those trees stands a hollow oak tree, which is the house of an owl who is called Old Brown. One autumn, when the nuts were ripe, and the leaves were on the hazel bushes were golden and green, Nutkin and Twinkleberry, and all the other squirrels, came out of the wood, and down to the edge of the lake. They made little rafts out of twigs, and they paddled away over the water to Owl Island to gather nuts. Each squirrel had a little sack and a large oar, and spread out his tail for a little sail. This is David Attenborough. Now the squirrels also took with them an offering of three fat mice as a present for Old Brown, and they put them up down upon his doorstep. Then Twinkleberry and other little squirrels each made a little bow, and said politely, Old Mr. Brown, will you favor us with permission to gather nuts upon your island? But Nutkin was excessively impertinent in his manners. He bobbed up and down like a little red cherry, singing, Riddle me, riddle me, rot tot tot, a little wee man in a little red cot. A staff in his hand and a stone in his throat, will you tell me this riddle? I'll give you a goat. Now this riddle is as old as the hills. Mr. Brown paid no attention whatever to Nutkin. He shut his eyes obstinately and went back to sleep. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts and sailed away home in the evening time. Hello, this is Sean Connery. By next morning they all came back again to Owl Island, and Twinkleberry and the others brought a fine fat mole and laid it on the stone in front of Old Brown's doorway, saying, Mr. Brown, will you favor us with your gracious permission to gather some more nuts? But Nutkin, who had no respect, began to dance up and down, tickling old Mr. Brown with a nettle and singing, Old Mr. B, riddle me re, hitty pity within the wall, hitty pity without the wall. If you touch hitty pity, hitty pity will bite you. Mr. Brown woke up suddenly and carried the mole into his house. He shut the door in Nutkin's face. Presently a little thread of blue smoke from a wood fire came up from the top of the tree, and Nutkin peeped through the keyhole and sang, A house full, a hole full, and you cannot gather a bowl full. Hi, this is Jason Statham. The squirrels searched for nuts all over the island and filled their little sacks. But Nutkin gathered oak apples, yellow and scarlet, and sat upon a beech stump playing marbles and watching the door of old Mr. Brown. On the third day, the squirrels got up very early and went fishing. They caught seven fat minnows as a present for old Brown. They paddled over the lake and landed under a crooked chestnut tree on Owl Island. Twinkleberry and six other little squirrels each carried a fat minnow, but Nutkin, who had no nice manners, brought no present at all. He ran in front singing, The man in the wilderness said to me, how many fucking strawberries grow in the sea? I answered him, as I thought good, as many fucking red herrings as grow in the wood. Hi, we're the Beatles. But old Mr. Brown took no interest in riddles, not even when the answer was provided for him. On the fourth day, the squirrels brought a present of six fat beetles. 
which were as good as plums and plum pudding for old brown. Each beater was carefully wrapped in a dark leaf, fastened with a pine nettle pin. But Nutkin, yeah, sang as rudely as ever. Old Mr. B, riddle me re, flower of England, fruit of Spain, met together in a shower of rain. Put in a bag tied round with a string. If you'll tell me this riddle, I'll give you a ring. Which was ridiculous of Nutkin, because he had not even gotten a ring to give to old Mr. Brown, you see. This is Liam Neeson. The older squirrels haunted up and down the nut bushes. But Nutkin gathered Robin's pincushions off a briar's bush and stocked them full of pine needle pins. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down upon the stone. On the fifth day, the squirrels brought a present of wild honey. It was so sweet and sticky that they licked their fingers as they put it down upon the stone. They had stolen it out of a bumblebee's nest on the tippity top of the hill. It's around this time in the story that you probably realise that an Irish accent is not very easy. But Notkin skipped up and down, singing, Hum a bum, buzz, buzz, hum a bum, buzz, as I went over to Tibbletine and met a flock of bonny swine, some yellow necked, some yellow backed. They were the very bonniest swines that e'er went to Tibbletine. Old Mr. Brown turned up his eyes in disgust at the impertinence of Notkin, but he ate up all the honey nonetheless. This is Thor, son of Odin and god of thunder. Although my actor is Australian and the character in the movie is technically Asgardian, I use a British accent, so I will contribute to the story. The squirrels filled their little sacks with nuts, but Nutkin sat upon a big flat rock and played ninipins with a crab apple in green fir cones. On the sixth day, which was Saturday, the squirrels came again for the last time. They brought a new laid egg in a little rush basket as a last parting present for old Brown. But Nutkin rang in front, singing and shouting. Ha <laughs> ha! Humpty Dumpty lies in the beck with a white counterpane round his neck. Forty doctors and forty rights cannot put the Humpty Dumpty to rights. Now old Brown took an interest in eggs. He opened one eye and shut it again, but he still did not speak. Hello, Stephen Fry again. Nutkin became more and more impertinent. Old Mr. B, old Mr. B, Hickamore, Hackamore, on the king's kitchen door. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't drive Hickamore, Hackamore, off the kit. Excuse me, off the king's kitchen door. Nutkin danced up and down like a sunbeam, but still old Brown said nothing at all. Nutkin began again. Arthur O'Bower has broken his band. He comes roaring up the land. The king of Scots, with all his power, cannot turn Arthur of the bower. Nutkin made a whirring noise to sound like the wind, and took a running jump right into the head of old Brown. Then all at once there was a flutterment and scufflement and a loud squeak. The other squirrels scuttered away into the bushes. When they came back very cautiously, peeping round the tree, there was old Brown sitting on his doorstep, quite still, with his eyes closed as if nothing had happened. But Nutkin was in his waistcoat pocket. This looks like the end of the story, doesn't it? But it isn't. Old Brown carried Nutkin into his house and held him up by the tail, intending to skin him. But Nutkin pulled so very hard that his tail broke in two and dashed up the staircase and escaped out of the attic window. And to this day, if you meet Nutkin up a tree and ask him a riddle, he will throw sticks at you and stamp his feet and scold and shout, Cuck, 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 crrrr, cuck, cuck, cuck. The End 
Hi, this is Ewan McGregor. While I'm technically not British, I can still close at the story in my Obi-Wan Kenobi voice. So I'd like to say good night, sleep tight, and please, young Jedi, don't let the bed bugs bite.